A year ago, we reported on what many people have called a decline in student liberties. In recent years, many students, parents, and some teachers have felt that schools have been unnecessarily controlling and have limited students' rights. They argue that high school is a transitional period between childhood and adulthood, and student freedom should increase. Let's look back at what students had to say one year ago about school policy. What changes have you seen over the past few years that you feel are an unnecessary restriction of your freedom? Well, when I was a sophomore, the juniors always got to go out to lunch. And I was like, oh, I can't wait till I'm a junior and I get to go out to lunch. But no, the second I turn a junior, they say, nope, no more juniors can go out to lunch. But the seniors still can, which I think is pretty unfair. In addition, they started guarding the lunchrooms. <laughs> Frankly, I think it's annoying. The administrators are taking time out of their job just to guard us. It would make sense if we were leaving the school, but we're staying on the ground. So if we're trying to go to the art room or something, there's no need to guard us. Do you think it could get any worse than this? Nope. In light of a recent incident, students feel that their rights may be in more danger than ever before. I sat down with the principal of Northampton High School to talk about this incident that may have sparked these changes. Can you talk to me about the uh, recent incident that caused this crackdown in school security? Well, about a year ago, a student went downtown in clear violation of the policy that the school has, and he got a burrito, and the whole trip was about 22 minutes. Now at the time, we had no idea that what the student did, but we've investigated since, and we found out. Now we're very disappointed in the student's actions, and we want to hold him accountable. Nothing seems strange to me about this incident, so I sat down with the student to talk about the rumors that stemmed from the events that followed. Um, after the burrito incident, what did the administration do? Well, initially we had uh, a big assembly, and Mr. Thompson got on stage and he was like yelling at us. It was, it was crazy. But then, like, nothing really happened. He said that we had to be more mature, act more our age. But get this, a week later, after the assembly, I was just, okay, I was in the physics room, I was pushing Liam around a little, like, we're friends. But I was pushing him around, Pat was there too. And we took his water bottle, and Pat hit it uh, up in the ceiling. But then Liam, he called the security. Like, who calls the security? But then the security came, and within one minute, they found the water bottle. One minute. It's just weird. But then a few days later, Dylan and I are in the cafeteria. We're just poking out our food. And we find something. You're not going to believe what it is. What do you find in the food? It's a microchip. They're tracking us. This is a bold claim, and we wanted to see if it held any truth. So we went down to the cafeteria to investigate for ourselves. After much poking and prodding, we eventually discovered what we set out to find, a microchip concealed in the school's cafeteria food. After this startling revelation, we went back to the principal to confront him and see what he had to say on the matter. There have been uh, many rumors, and we have collected some evidence that seems to suggest that the school has employed a tracking technology to uh, keep a handle on students' movements. Would you care to comment on this? Well, the school was planning to release this information in a few weeks' time, but now is a good a time as any. Ever since uh, the burrito incident, this school has been at the forefront of new technology. Um, we've been able to track students uh, throughout the school day, and uh, bullying has gone way down. Um, there haven't been any violent incidents ever since. Attendance rate uh, has gone way up. Uh, the learning environment is much improved now and students feel much, much safer. I still had more questions, so I asked the principal if he could go into more depth on how the new student monitoring system actually worked. To answer my questions, he pointed me to the original creator of the tracking chips. Right. Yeah, so you asked about the chips that we're working on. So we, you know, these are uh, chips that we're using to track the students. It's really beneficial so we don't have to do attendance anymore. We know where the students are, if they're in the room, if they're out of the room. And the administrators have asked me to build these chips. I, you know, I used to teach kids, I loved it, but now all I do every day is work to make these chips better. You know, our initial generation of chips that we were uh, 
ending up in the students were far too big and they lodge under the student's skin and they were looking very lumpy and kind of Frankenstein with lumps in their neck. And now we're on to our third or fourth generation and they're much smaller and uh, the students don't notice when they ingest them in the cafeteria food or um, you know the water bottle filler is very subtle. We can uh, insert the chips in the water and the students will drink them and they don't even realize that they're being injected with these uh, chips that will follow them throughout the school. But like I said, it's a huge benefit for the teachers that are still teaching because you don't have to take attendance anymore. Students would just come in and out. We know when they're in our rooms. And uh, yeah, so it's very beneficial. Unfortunately, I'm not able to teach the students anymore because I'm having to work on uh, make these chips better and better. It is easy to see the positive effects of this new technology. However, since the details have been made public, it has become a matter of great controversy among students. Uh, Pierre, how do you feel about the fact that the school is tracking students with microchips? Um, you know, I just don't think it's right. And so the fact that our privacy is being breached by the school uh, is first of all unheard of, and second of all not okay and unacceptable. Well, I guess lots of people think it's invasive, but um, I don't do anything wrong, so it's not going to harm me. Yeah. I'm very much in support of it. I think it's good. I think kids leave the class way too much. I think they need to be tracked, and I think it's for the best, to be honest. I really, um, I really was confident that whenever I was skipping class, my teachers would know, so that you know I could make up the right amount of homework, and um, that's really reassuring because if I'm skipping class, obviously, I still want to do that work. That's the whole reason. Um, I like that wherever I go, even when it's not school hours and the school isn't legally responsible for me, um, I really like how um, they really, they, you know, they know where I am, they care about me. So um, if they think I'm doing something illegal, they'll call the cops on me. Um, that's really reassuring. Yeah. Thanks for your opinion. Students held various views on the issue. Some supported it, some were against it, and some were just sarcastic. Here's what the principal had to say about it. Uh, some students have expressed concern that this may be a violation of their rights. Um, do you have any thoughts on the matter? Well, safety at uh, the school is their number one priority, so if students feel as though their rights are compromised, um, I can only say that they're much, much safer um, than, than they would be otherwise. So I can only say that this tracking technology is doing much more good than harm. And as of now, that appears to be the case. It's amazing what new technology can do when implemented in schools. I'm Ben Ravel, and you've been watching What's Next.